Hi, this is Jim from Realtruth.net coming to you with lesson number nine. And the title of this lesson is Sin and Falling Away. And the this lesson is to the believer, to those that believe in the Messiah in redemption, those that believe in uh, Yahweh and so it's to edify you and remind you of the path you're on and how you need to continue walking in the right path <clears throat> and that you don't uh, stray from that path because the false doctrine of uh, once saved, always saved is a very, very hard lie from the devil. And uh, we only find redemption if we overcome unto our death. And it says, where the tree falls, so it lies. Where the man dies, so he is. And <clears throat> so... I'm going to start by reading a little bit out of Ezekiel, going to Ezekiel 3. And moreover, Yahweh said unto me, Son of man, eat what you find, eat this roll, and go and speak unto the house of Israel. For I opened, so I opened my mouth, and Yahweh caused me to eat the roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause your belly to eat and fill your bowels with this roll that I give you. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as sweet as honey for sweetness. And Yahweh said unto me, <clears throat> Son of man, go and get you unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. Now, <clears throat> I want to stop here just for a second house of Israel is we are of that house of Israel we are grafted into the vine we are grafted into the seed and we are Israel just like the blood uh, the blood relatives of Abraham are Israel the we that are grafted in are Israel <coughs> and if you don't realize that you are grafted in and that you are under the same requirement as the house of Israel as what is spoken here then you've missed the mark you have simply missed the mark you've been deceived um, because <clears throat> it is to Israel that the promises are made and we are Israel and it's given the whole world is given the opportunity to come in and be part of the house of Yahweh, the house of Israel. <clears throat> Continuing on, now in verse 5, Ezekiel 3, 5. For you are not sent to a people of a strange speech, or of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of a strange speech, and of a hard language whose words you cannot understand surely had I sent you to them they would have hearkened unto you and isn't that what it sounds like for us even today <clears throat> as we cry out to the church to cease from sin to come back to Yahweh to come back to his commandments to come to his Sabbath to get out of the Babylon to get out of that false worship of the <clears throat> of the uh, first day doctrine that's right out of the pit of hell they understand English they're not here and surely if you go to someone who doesn't understand they would hear it's sad because it is exactly the way it is today <clears throat> behold I have set your face strong 
against their faces and your forehead strong against their foreheads as an adamant hardener then flint have I made your forehead fever them not neither be dismayed at their looks though they be a rebellious house and I speak out to my family and to those that that I have spoken to the hardness of the heart they're hard hard they even the Sabbath keepers profane the Sabbath and go out and do things on the Sabbath that are abominable and think they're justified but it all I guess that really comes down to is are you believing in this false Messiah this false Jesus that's been put out here by the uh, Catholics and the Protestants uh, or are you believing in the true issue of the true son of Yahweh if you believe in the true son of Yahweh you're gonna have ears to hear moreover Yahweh said unto me son of man all my words that I speak unto you receive in thine heart and hear with thine ears oh could we only hear please listen 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 to Yahweh don't listen to me listen to Yahweh get your book out read it go get you to them of the captivity to the children of your people and speak unto them and tell them thus says the Adonai Yahweh whether they will hear or whether they will forbear then the Spirit took me and I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing and saying blessed be the glory of Yahweh from his place and I heard the noise of the wings of living creatures that touch one another and the noise of the wheels over against them and the noise of the great rushing <clears throat> we can't even begin to imagine what is awaiting us uh, when we are resurrected from our graves or when we're changed and uh, I just I just hope and pray that everyone listen can get an understanding and can can see what an awesome creator we have and we need to fear him because he has never accepted the works of the hands of man for anything because he made everything so what can we make for him what can we build for him what can we do for him absolutely nothing the only thing we can do is obey him in our obedience then he will give us works to do but if we don't even obey there's nothing <clears throat> there's nothing there for us so uh, I'm gonna leave off reading there that last verse 12 in Ezekiel 3 and I'm, I'm sorry I just don't explain to anybody watching this video I'm doing this because it is an audio uh, uh, message also so I need to explain where I'm at in the scriptures uh, coming now to uh, Ezekiel 3 and again we're going to start at verse 17 and I'll I'll read this and we'll discuss it a little bit <clears throat> and son of man I have made you a watchman unto the house of Israel therefore hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me now this could be to anyone that will speak to the law and the prophets anyone that will speak to the truth he is giving us the word in our mouth the word is what we have here in front of us the word are the scriptures the Old Testament scriptures are the word and that is what he has given us to teach Ezekiel 318 when I say unto the wicked you shall surely die 
and you give him not warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way. To save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hand. And this video is taking the blood off of my hands for everyone out there. It's here. Yahweh leads you past it. You hear it. I'm free. And the same with my uh, family, with all those that I'm in contact with. I preach the truth. I preach only the word. I teach only the word. It's what the word says, not what man thinks. It's not the philosophies and doctrines of men. It's what the word says. And I get rejected for it, and that's okay. Ezekiel 3.19, yet if you warn the wicked, and the wicked are really lawbreakers, that's literally what that word means, those that have missed the mark, those that are not following the commandments of Yahweh, and he turn, if you warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, lawlessness, that you have delivered your soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness, now this is this is coming back here, the sin and falling away. And so let's let's understand this that when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit lawlessness or iniquity or break the law, the commandments and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because you have not given him warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered but his blood will I require at thy hand. <clears throat> now you understand this is a righteous man. This is one who knew the way walked on the way, is doing what's right, and he's turning to commit a wick, uh, iniquity. He's turning away from it. And what does it say? He says, he shall die. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered. Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man that the righteous man sin not and he doth not sin he shall surely live because he is warned and also you have delivered your soul and that's really what this video that's really what this is all about it's about edification it's about warning it's about uh, letting everyone know don't do it. Do not do it. Find the will within yourself. Cease from sin. If you're in the sin, quit it. Quit the sin. Deliver your soul. Ezekiel 18.20 the soul that sins, it shall die. That edict and that rule has not changed. It's been out there since uh, the commandment was given before the transgression. And it will remain there until this earth is burned up and done away with. <coughs> And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But understand this. If you are in sin, you will die. If you have not repented, if you have not changed, if you have not stopped the sin, you will die. doesn't matter how much you plead the blood. doesn't matter what excuses you make for it. doesn't matter anything at all will not stand in the day of judgment. If you are transgressing, you will die. 
and we need to stop the transgression. It's got to stop. The Son shall not bear the iniquity of the Father, neither shall the Father bear the iniquity of the Son. We bear our own. No one, no one is an excuse for you. <clears throat> The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn from his sins that he has committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, and he shall not die. Turn 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 the only way to life is to keep the commandments that is how you're going to find life you're going to do that which is lawful and right all his transgressions that he has committed they shall not be mentioned unto him in his righteousness that he hath done he shall live Have I any pleasure at all in the that the wicked should die? Says the Adonai Yahweh. And not that he should turn from his ways and live. He's asking us turn, turn, turn. This is to you Christians out there that are an abomination unto him, calling upon his name and forsaking his law and walking in unrighteousness your soul's gonna die you are going to die your doctrines of men your doctrines of your church your doctrines of your protestancy your doctrines of your catholicism is going to kill you period But when the righteous turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and does according to all the abominations of the wicked man does, shall he live? All his righteousness that he has done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass that he has trespassed and in his sin that he has sinned, in them he shall die. So all you once saved always savers understand this verse stands for us today Yeshua did not do away with the law and the prophets remember not one jot or one tittle will pass away they do not change these things stand as fundamental truths Ezekiel 18:25. yet you say the way of Adonai is not equal. Hear now, O house of Israel. Is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and dies in him for his iniquity that he hath done, he shall die. And again, when the wicked man turns away from his wickedness, that he has committed and does that which is lawful and right he shall save his soul alive how can this be possible wait a minute I thought in the New Testament the only way we can save our souls alive is through Yeshua yes it is and the same way these people save their souls alive is they repented they had to give their sacrifice their offering to the schoolmaster which led to Yeshua but what did they have to do they had to turn and do what was lawful and right they had to obey the commandments because he considers in verse 28 because he considers and turns away from his transgressions that he has committed he shall surely live and not die no matter what folks you got to turn from your transgression. Sin is the transgression of the law. John tells us that. Through the Spirit of Yahweh, 
we are told that sin is the transgression of the law. Do not, do not let yourselves be deceived. And in Hebrews 6, and we'll start in Hebrews 6, 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of the Messiah, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith towards Yahweh, of the doctrine of baptisms and the laying on of hands and the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And this will we do if Yahweh permit. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of Yahweh and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance seeing they crucify to themselves the son of Yahweh afresh and put him to an open shame altar calls how many times have you been to the altar call you go and you keep refreshing you keep coming oh I've sinned oh I've got to come back oh I've fallen away yes I guess my take is is that you've never really tasted it you've never really been there in the first place and so but one that has been there one that has tasted it, one that has been in this, and I'm going to say this for myself, I've tasted it, I'm here, I know what it is. If I fall away, I know I ain't there. The spirit that will come up on me, there ain't no chance on this whole wide world that I would ever be able to repent. It says so right here. If they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of Yahweh afresh, and put him to open shame. It cannot be done. It is impossible. So it can. This blows the once saved, always saved doctrine right out of the water. It's impossible to have a once saved, always saved doctrine when Hebrews 6, 4, 5, and 6 is here. And what does it say in the beginning here? It says, leaving the principles of the doctrines. Of Wait a minute. We're supposed to be at the cross. We stay at the cross. We can't get away from the cross. Why? You're going to just sit here under the principles of the doctrines of the Messiah on these things that you're going to preach them every day, every Sunday, every Sabbath in your service. Just preach them over and over and over. Well, what? To the supposedly the saved? No. Once you've done it, get away. Come past it. You've moved on. You're in a new life. Go. Go on to perfection. Go on to perfection. Let me come to Hebrews 6.3. Let me go to this real quick. Okay. I was just wondering if there was something else uh, in here that would be pertinent to this, but that you be not slothful as followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when Yahweh made a promise to Abraham because he did swear by no greater, he swore by himself. We have a great promise to us. Don't screw it up. Don't let yourself get lost. Hebrews 10.23 <clears throat> And this part is, is again, this is... Uh, uh, an admonition to all of us, right? Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For Yahweh is faithful that promised. 
and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. And that's what I'm doing. I'm provoking everyone here to love good works. Be obedient. Obey the law. Do the things of Yahweh. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. Unfortunately, we, there's no one around to assemble with in this area, as the matter of some is. In other words, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. We exhort one another. Don't commit the sin. Stop the sin. For if we sin willfully of our own will, turn away willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. Where's the one saved always say? This is why I'm saying. This is not here for a once saved, always saved type gospel. This is a warning to us that we don't sin. I heard a man, no, I don't even want to say it because I don't want it misconstrued. But I've heard someone say that it was possible to go ahead and do it all on purpose and and uh, and just come back and repent and you're okay. And, I, and he was trying to explain this first. I'm not trying to explain it because I here's what, here I know. I know I have received the knowledge of the truth. Has everyone received the knowledge of the truth? I don't know. All I'm saying is this is what the scripture says. That if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. But a certain fearful looking for a judgment of fire and indignation which will devour the adversaries and he that despised Moses died without mercy under two or three witnesses and how much sore punishment suppose you should be unto you shall he be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the son of Yahweh and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and done despite unto the spirit of grace blaspheming the Holy Spirit that's really what it's about because if you have the spirit of Yahweh in you he's going to tell you don't do it don't do it don't do it and if you forcefully go against that that's that's why this I'm sorry for doing that to you I won't do it again that's why this says there is no more sacrifice because you have willfully blaspheme the Holy Spirit and Yeshua said you can't do that so and whether whether people have done this without understanding I have no clue I I cannot judge anyone all I can do is judge myself I know that if I went out and committed a sin or broke the commandments it would have to absolutely be on purpose and so <clears throat> I'm not going to do it um, for we know that know him that has said we know Yahweh that has said vengeance belongs to me and I will recompense said Yahweh and again Yahweh shall judge his people <laughs> and then we come to Hebrews 12 11 now no chastening for the present time seems to be joyous <clears throat> but grievous nevertheless afterward it yields a peaceable a peaceful fruit of righteousness unto them that are exercised by it therefore lift up the hands that hang down and the feeble knees and make straight the paths of your feet get into the commandments keep the commandments walk in that path lest that which is lame be turned out of the way but let it rather be healed turn to Yahweh come back to the commandments come back come back to them get out of that Babylon church get out of your your men's doctrines get out of the Catholicism the Protestantism get out get out get out and heal don't and when you find out you're wrong you're going to be dis despaired this says your hands are hanging down your knees are feeble you you're 
can't go anymore. It says, come out and be healed, lest that you be turned out of the way. 12.14, follow peace with all men and, and holiness. Set apartness, holiness means to be set apart. You got to be set apart from men. You follow peace with all men and you're set apart from them. You don't do their ways. You don't follow their things. Because without such no man shall see the Adonai. Looking diligently lest any man fail the grace of Yahweh. Lest any root of bitterness spring up to trouble you in which many are defiled they're defiled because they're bitter about certain things we've got to learn to forgive lest there be any fornicator or profane person <clears throat> as Esau who for a morsel of meat sold his birthright for you know that afterward when he would have inherited the blessing he was rejected for he found no place of repentance though he sought it carefully with tears. And this is what we're saying. For you that are the house of Israel, for you that are here, you're not permanently here. Don't sell your birthright for a morsel of meat, for a little bit of sin, for a little bit of transgression, because it don't work. You cannot put your your righteousness on pause go over here and go do sin and then come back and turn it off pause and then say you're righteous again you cannot there is no pause button in righteousness there's no pause button in the the path of Yahweh there is no detours there's nothing you, you cannot do it and that's what this message is all about it cannot be done Stay on the straight and narrow. Repent, repent, repent. If you have, if you're not on it, and if you have, repent. 12.18, Hebrews 12.18 For you are not come to the mount that can be touched, and that burned with fire unto blackness and darkness and tempest, and the mount of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated the word would not be spoken to them anymore. And this comes back to, this is the giving of the Ten Commandments on the Mount. This is what this is talking about here. <clears throat> and they said, no, we don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear it. What was there? The word, the word, the word, the word should not be spoken to them anymore. The word of Yahweh is life. The words out of his mouth are life. For they could not endure that which was commanded. What? They couldn't endure it? Why couldn't they endure it? It's pretty simple. The Ten Commandments are pretty simple. And then, if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it should be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly uh, fear and quake. But you are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of Yahweh, the living Elohim, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels to the general assembly and set apart assembly of the firstborn which are written in heaven and to Yahweh the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect and to Yeshua the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling and that speaks better things than that of Abel. We are come to Zion, to the heavenly of Jerusalem. You think Jerusalem's out of the picture? It ain't even close to being out of the pictures, folks. This carnal Jerusalem we have down here on this earth today is being used as a stumbling stone to uh, 
culminate these end of days that we are in. But the real heavenly Jerusalem, that's where we're at. Jerusalem is real. And we're coming to it. And you better be keeping the commandments of Yahweh if you're coming into the heavenly Jerusalem. He is not accepting sin up there. Sin is not going in. Transgression is not going in. Not keeping the commandments of God. If you are not doing that, you are not going in. Period. That is what the word says. You cannot get in if you are transgressing the commandments of Yahweh. In 2 Peter 12, 2, But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they do not understand, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Who are these beasts? There are Protestant teachers. They're the Protestant ministers. They're the Protestant elders. They're the Protestant pastors. They're the Catholic fathers. They're the Catholic deacons. They're all of those people are just brute beasts. They do not understand. And they shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Now they they don't all count it pleasure to write in the daytime, but they do count it pleasure to oh, disobey the law. They don't do it. Their spots and blemishes, sporting themselves in their own deceptiveness while they feast with you. Having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin. And you, and you think eyes full of adul adultery doesn't just, isn't just about uh, a man looking on another woman. Adultery is also uh, a religious person looking upon other religion, looking upon other gods. So when you're looking upon a trinity or a modalist god, you're in adultery because you're worshiping an idol. That's not the true Yahweh. And you cannot cease from sin. You just can stay in it. You love your church, you love your doctrine, you're going to stay in your sun worship, you're going to stay in your Good Friday and your Christmas and all those abominable things. You're not going to come out. And that's just the problem. And this is what, and your leaders are going to keep you there. That's what they're saying. Their eyes are full of adultery and cannot cease from sin. They're beguiling unstable souls. In heart they have exercised with covetous practice, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Boaz, Bo Bosar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, <clears throat> and was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass speaking with a man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that carry with a tempest, to whom the midst of darkness is reserved forever. They are. They are absolutely, anyone in a Sunday church is listening to a teacher that is a well without water. There is no life in it. No life whatsoever. Don't care if you don't like the words I'm speaking. You don't have life if you are in one of those. And you can even be in the Sabbath keeping church and be a, living in a trinity and in the Catholic doctrine and you there's no life there either. It's not about, you can keep, say you're keeping the Sabbath, but you can be lost keeping the Sabbath. It's about true obedience, it's about true repentance, about knowing the true Yahweh, the one and only Yahweh. It's about knowing His Son Yeshua, His Son Yeshua, not a God Yeshua. And having the power of Yahweh within you, He is giving you His power for light, understanding, wisdom, and knowledge. For they speak swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those which are clean escaped from them who live in air. While they promise them liberty, which are, is that now what you're being promised? Oh, liberty, you're free, you're free from the law of God. You can do whatever you want. You're free, you're free. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's what they're promising you. 
They themselves are the servants of corruption. Yes, they are. For of whom a man is overcome, the same as he brought into bondage. If you sin, you are in bondage to sin. You can't get out of it. The only way to get out of it is to repent and never, ever, ever go back to it. Never do it again. 2 Peter 2.20 <clears throat> For if after they have escaped, and this is, this is going back to the message. I kind of got off track here, but for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Master and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah, and they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. You notice it doesn't say, oh, they can come back to another altar call. It doesn't say that. It says the latter end is worse than the beginning. It had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they had known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Of course, <clears throat> most people haven't even gotten to the commandment yet, and they need to. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sour that is washed to a wart wallowing in the mire. Second Peter 3, 9 Yahweh is not slack concerning his promise, his man count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, that it all should come to repentance. For the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night, in the which that the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and elements shall melt with a fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conversation and godliness? looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of Yahweh, wherein the heavens, being on fire, will be dissolved, and the elements will melt with a fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwells righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, Seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. An account that the long suffering of Yahweh is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom, wisdom, wisdom given unto him, is written unto you. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable fight as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction you therefore beloved seeing ye know these things before beware lest you also being led away with the air of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Master and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah, and to Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. My dear friends, and those that are in the Messiah, Take heed to the scriptures. Do not sin. Do not walk in the way of the world. <clears throat> Flee from that sin. You can't put your righteousness on pause, and you can't, and you can't be lollygagging around in your Babylonian uh, sun worshiping church. You need to get out. 
you need to come away. You need to understand there is no such thing as salvation in sin. There is sin and falling away and you can fall away and those that are in it must stay right. And you got to get in it and get it repent and get in it. Get in it full heartedly unto Yahweh and throw the pause key away. Erase it off of the menu. There is no such thing as a pause key in your path to the kingdom. I hope this has been a blessing to you. And as I always say, study your Bible. And I always, I'm changing it. Study your Bible. Read your Bible. Go to your Bible. Read these things in your Bible. This is what your Bible says. This is what the Word of Yahweh says. And if your church doctrine speaks anything other than what you've said, seen here, your church doctrine is wrong. It is a lie because it is contrary to what the Word of Yahweh says. So, I pray that Yahweh will bless His Word. I pray that it will find fertile ground to fall on. And I pray that if it falls on that fertile ground, that it can grow and gain root. And Yahweh, I just ask you to bless these words. And if any viewer comes across them, let it penetrate into their heart. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Thank you for watching.